Welcome! Step-by-step -step alternative garden photography using digital textures, photo transfer, and encaustic wax. All for my favorite dahlia. September is a long wait, but they do finally arrive and always worth waiting for. And I took it home from the farmer's market. And as you can see, there's a little sign of, you know, a little bit of aging and whatnot. I photographed it against the white background because when I do this series, which is based on applying a photo texture and then doing a photo transfer and then applying encaustic wax. I find that the white background works best for me. So anyway, then while still in Photoshop, I do a little digital painting. And in this case, I use the plugin from Topaz called Impressions. And I'm not exactly sure which uh, combination I used, but I do it for one reason. It emphasizes the color, the contrast, and begins to add a bit of texture, which always works well in the photo transfer process. So I did that. Then I applied a texture. And this texture may be from the French Kiss collection, but uh, I have a, so many of them that sometimes I forget which one it is. But uh, I found it pleasing, and so I added it. That's another thing I found that when I do the photo transfer, whatever texture I've added, it seems to be enhanced by the transfer process. And it may dull the color a bit, or it may add more texture, but whatever, I seem to like the combination. Then I start the encaustic process. And this print here I do on my inkjet printer on a certain kind of matte paper, uh, Epson presentation matte. And I have to reverse the image if I'm going to transfer it. Because as you can see from this printed image, my name here is reversed as well as the whole image. But once I apply it to this encaustic substrate, it will be oriented correctly. But it's a mistake that a lot of us make in the beginning when we do transfer not to reverse the image. It's a simple Photoshop edit and then flip horizontal and you'll get what you need. This substrate here is a four inch by four inch uh, wooden cradle board that I I think there's probably three layers of wax there. The bottom one is a clear encaustic and then probably two layers of white pigment wax. And I try to get it as smooth as I can, although you can see up here a little ridge and a little indentation. I swear to God, it is so hard to get a smooth, smooth surface. Um, the day I do a tutorial on that uh, is far in the future because I simply uh, don't have that down. But at any rate, this was as smooth as I was going to get this one. And before I do the transfer, I warm up this board uh, with the heat gun. Warm it to, the, it's not to a liquid a point, but it is warm, and I found that that's a critical, critical um, feature to a successful transfer. And believe you me, I have many unsuccessful ones. And here's my favorite part. 
But before I explain what you're seeing, on once I've put the image onto uh, the hot wax and it's the image side down onto the wax, I press it in firmly all around it and spend about 10 minutes on this 4 inch by 4 inch surface burnishing it into the hot wax. And I do that by uh, using a spoon at a, you know, maybe a 45 degree angle or a printer's uh, uh, tool tip that I borrowed from a wood burning toolkit. And um, I burnish it really as scientifically as I'm capable of doing. And the reason I do it uh, with this degree of detail is that if you don't burnish it, if you don't spend the time burnishing it correctly, you create problems for yourself down the line. And I've learned that uh, it's better to spend the time up front. And so that's why I, it's about 10 minutes of the burnishing. And then I apply some water to the burnished surface and begin what is another 10 minute, uh, maybe even more, uh, process of rubbing the paper off. And there's a, um, a combination of water and paper that you just learn as you go along. You don't drown the thing <laughs> because that creates problems, but you also don't want to have it too dry because you run the risk of taking off the image entirely from the surface. So it's another thing you begin to learn how to do and um, for me it's actually I love this process. I love seeing the image emerge from the transfer and as I uh, uh, rub the paper off seeing how the image has uh, transferred. Now here was the uh, transfer itself and as you can see there's these little spots right here and this is where the image did not transfer or I was too rough with it. Could be one of those two. Um, and in the beginning, when I was doing these transfers, I would always despair seeing these uh, gaping things. And then I realized that one could correct them. And in this case, I corrected it with pan pastels, which work very well with encaustic wax. And also oil pigments are another great choice. And it requires a combination of uh, you know, uh, applying them and then uh, uh, heating them up a bit just to fix them. But that's uh, a tutorial for another day and probably uh, left to another person too. Anyway, I decided to also add oil pigments to the background and to the border. And one of the reasons I decided to do this is that this dahlia is going to be in a series of images that will be sold from my portfolio digitally online. And so the end image needed to be a digital one. So I added uh, just at the finishing end of adding the encaustic oil paints and letting them dry and do all that. Um, you know, a Photoshop levels or something to uh, tweak it the way I wanted to so that the final image 
would look like this. So there you go, September's Dahlia. It took me two days. This is where adding alternative techniques also adds time. But to me, I just love the combination of the digital world and the hands-on world. Okay, see you next time.